Good day students. Uh, I want to take you on physics. The topic of today, the first topic we have is a cathode oscilloscope. Remember in our previous lecture, we mentioned cathode oscilloscope as one of the applications of a thermionic emission. So the, today we are discussing the cathode ray oscilloscope. Now, specific objective. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to study features of cathode ray oscilloscope, list the uses of the oscilloscope, then define the electric field, list the properties of electric field, state the Coulomb's law, then calculate the force of attraction and repulsion between two charges. Okay, now we say Cathode ray oscilloscope is the application of thermionic emission, as we discussed previously. It is an instrument used for the investigation of current and voltage in electronic circuits. This instrument, we use it to examine the pattern of current and voltage in electronic circuit to determine whether such current and voltage are smooth, whether they are flowing as they are supposed to flow. Then look at the features. So the cathode ray oscilloscope is a vacuum tube that contains three main components. We have three major components of the cathode ray oscilloscope. Number one, we have the electron gun. Number two, we have the fluorescent screen. Then the deflector or reflector plate. In the right order, number one, we have the electron gun. Number two, we have the deflector plate. And number three, the fluorescent screen. These are the three major parts. Now, let me briefly explain these three major parts. Now, if you look at the diagram of the oscilloscope, we have the electron gun. The electron gun consists of the filament, the cathode, and the grid. These are the three major parts of the electron gun. What is the function of the electron gun? First of all, when the current is applied, a very high current, you remember, we said a very high current is required to produce such electrical discharge. So when the high voltage is applied, it hits the filament and the filament emits electron by thermionic emission. Then, you remember here, this is a form of indirect heating because the filament hits the cathode. It is unlike the direct heating where the filament is the cathode. So here, the filament hits the cathode, the cathode now emits electron. The electron will now accelerate. The grid is just the opening that projects the electron, making the electron to accelerate at a particular path, where it now passes through the deflecting system. Now, the deflecting system, if you look at it, is made up of two plates. 
two pays. The first pay, they are the two vertical plates. We call them X plates. Then the second, we have the two horizontal plates. We call them the Y plates. So now you see the ray passes through the deflecting system and now focused on the fluorescent screen. Now, when you watch, you see the deflecting system, the X plate help to adjust the cathode ray left and right. That is in a horizontal direction. That is why we call them the X plates. So when the pattern is to be adjusted to the right or to the left, it is the X plate that do such adjustments. Now, if the, the, the beam is to be adjusted up and down, it is the Y plate that will do that. So that is why we call that them deflecting system because they have to deflect the beam either left and right or up and down. Then the third part is the fluorescent screen. It is a screen. We call it fluorescent because it produces a scintillation when the cathode ray focuses on it. So immediately the rays are projected on the screen, the screen flashes. So the flashing of the screen produces bright spots. And that bright, bright spot can now trace out pattern. And that pattern will now represent the flow of current and the voltage. This is the brief explanation of the features. Now we look at the operation of the cathode ray oscilloscope. Now we say the heated filament hit the cathode and cause it to produce stream of electrons by thermionic emission, which travels to the screen. Immediately the, electro the, the, the electrons are produced, they will begin to accelerate. The acceleration is towards the what? The screen. Now, we say the positive biased anode accelerates the electrons onto the screen. The X plates are used to move the electron beam left and right, as we said earlier, while the Y plates move the electron beam up and down. Then the grid, you remember the grid is a part of the electron gone. So the grid is used to regulate the amount of electron that travel to the screen and cause the screen to display the pattern. So the screen displays the pattern of the electron spot that is formed. Then when you look, you see that the, towards the tail end of the oscilloscope, we have the cooling fin. The cooling fin is attached to cool the temperature of the tube. You know, because of the heat that is produced by this uh, filament, the system gets hot. So, it is the cooling fin that tries to cool the system. So now, at the end of the tube is the fluorescent screen, onto which the electron beam is focused to form a bright spot which will trace out a pattern on the screen according to the voltage variation applied to the X and Y plates. So, you see the pattern. The pattern of the voltage and the current, they follow sinusoidal pattern, showing that they vary periodically with time. So, that is the operation of the cathode ray oscilloscope. So, you just know it's the same thermionic emission.
which we discussed earlier. Now, the uses of cathode ray oscilloscope, both in industry, in medicine, cathode ray oscilloscope have various applications. In industry, number one, cathode ray oscilloscope is used to measure the direct current and alternating current voltages. You know, when you want to determine the current and voltage pattern in electronic circuits, the best appliance we can use is the cathode ray oscilloscope. It measures the pattern of the current flowing, thereby determining the smoothness or the roughness of the voltage. So even in voltage regulation, like stabilization, we use cathode ray oscilloscope to study the system. For instance, in industry where appliances something like the voltage regulator, that is the normal stabilizer you know, is made, the cathode ray oscilloscope is used in testing them to know whether their voltage stabilization is smooth. Because they study the pattern of the voltage given out by such instruments and that is used to determine their pattern to know whether it's such voltage is smooth or whether it is rough. The number two, we say it is also used to measure the frequency of AC voltages, the alternating current. You know, the alternating current flow with a particular what frequency at a given frequency for instance in nigeria the frequency of the alternating voltage is 50 hertz the other day i told you the voltage is 220 volts and the frequency the frequency is 50 hertz okay in some european countries and us they make use of uh, the voltage that is 110 volts and frequency of 60 hertz. Some countries like France, Germany, uh, and many other European countries, they make use of dual voltage system, both 220, 50, and 110, 60 hertz. So it is the oscilloscope that we use to measure such frequency. The number three, oscilloscope is also used to compare the frequency of AC voltages. You know, when there are two voltage source, we have two voltage sources with different voltage and frequency, the oscilloscope play a very good role in comparing the frequency of such voltages. Cathode ray oscilloscope is also used as a clock. We also use it as a timepiece to measure the time. For it, this is a place where it plays a very vital role. We use it in, remember I told you, in industry and in health. In health, especially in the hospital, we use this oscilloscope to measure the time rate of flow of blood vessel, the flow of blood in blood vessel. We also use it to measure the time of pulse. Like in heartbeat, we use the oscilloscope. It's a clock, we use it. You know, sometimes when you go to a hospital, the doctors, they try to use maybe five, uh, five more manometer to measure your pulse. They will see, they will begin to use their timepiece to check maybe the number of pulse per minute. That one is rough. It's a rough case. Oscilloscope, give the exact time for one complete pulse. It is also used to measure the time of functioning of many other 
organs. So we also use it as what? The time base. The time base. So these are the uses of cathode ray oscilloscope. Then in summary, we say cathode ray oscilloscope is a vacuum tube that functions on the principle of thermionic emission. And it has three major components, the electron gun, the deflecting system, and the fluorescent screen. Okay, now we move over to electric field. Electric field. We know field. Field, simply we know is a region which is under the influence of an external force. In the field, we have the electric field, magnetic field, and gravitational field. So for today, we are going to look at electric field. Now, firstly, we look at the force between two point charges, then the Coulomb's law. Now, we said the magnitude of the force between two electrically charged bodies was studied by a French physicist, Charles Coulomb, in 1784. When Charles Coulomb investigated this force, he showed that if the two bodies were small compared the distance between them, that means if the two bodies were placed a little far apart compared to their body size, he said he discovered that the force between two such bodies was inversely proportional to the square of the distance r between them. So that means the bigger the distance, the higher the force. But the smaller the distance, the bigger the distance, the smaller the force. The smaller the distance, the bigger the force. Okay. Charles Coulomb also discovered that the two forces, he also discovered that the forces were also directly proportional to the product of the charges Q1 and Q2. You remember we said earlier that the force is inversely proportional to the distance apart. That force condition is what we call the inverse square law. We call it inverse square law. The inverse square law is such laws that electric field, magnetic field, and gravitational field, all of them obey such law. You should take note of that. Because in the exam, they will ask you which of the laws that obey the inverse square law. You know it is electric, magnetic, and gravitational field. Okay. So when you look, you see F is inversely proportional to R square, and F is inversely proportional, F is directly proportional to Q1, Q2. So we now say that by combining the two equations, so if you check now, we have two proportionality. So when we combine them, we now get what we call the Coulomb's law. So, and the law states that the force of attraction or repulsion between two point charges is directly proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of their distance apart. So when you look, you see the force is proportional to the Q1, Q2 and inversely proportional to R square. So F is equal to K, Q1, Q2 over R square, where K is the constant of 
proportionality. Now, experiment shows that k is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, where epsilon 0 is a constant known as permittivity of free space. So, we see the value, the numerical value of epsilon 0 is equal to 8.85 times 10 raised to the power minus 12 column square per newton per meter square. Where k, which we say is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, is equal to 9.0 times 10 raised to the power 9 newton meter square per column square. Okay, example 1. We are giving, let's say, calculate the magnitude, the magnitude of force of attraction between two point charges plus five microcoulomb and minus eight microcoulomb separated at a distance of 0 0.02 meter apart. So you are giving a constant one over four pi epsilon zero is equal to 9.0 times 10 to power, my, to power nine newton meter square per coulomb square. Now, solution. You see that F is equal to Q1, Q2 over 4 pi epsilon 0 R squared, which is equal to 9 times 10 to power 9 multiplied by 5 times 10 to power minus 6 multiplied by 8 times 10 to power minus 6 all over 0 0.02 squared. And that gives us 900 Newton. Now, when you look at the calculation, you will see micro. You remember the micro means 10 raised to the power minus 6, and that is why we have 5 times 10 to the power minus 6. Likewise, in the 8 times 10 raised to the power minus 6, they are sub multiples which we have studied in. SS1. Okay, example two. You are told to calculate the value of two equal charges if they repel each other with a force of 0 0.20 Newton when situated 50 cm apart. Now, if you watch in example one, we say that the force between them is attraction because the two charges are of opposite polarities. We have the positive and the negative charges. So the force, the electrostatic, electrostatic force between them will be uh, attractive. But here, we are talking about repulsive force. That means that the two charges must be of the same polarity. So when you look at the same Coulomb's law, ZF is equal to Q1, Q2 over 4 pi epsilon 0 square. In this case, they say the forces are equal. So Q1 is equal to Q2. So the force, we have that 0 0.20 is equal to 9 times 10 to the power 9 multiplied by Q squared over 0 0.5 squared. So making Q squared the subject of the formula, it implies that Q squared is equal to 0 0.2 multiplied by 0 0.5 squared over 9 times 10 to the power 9. Therefore, Q is equal to the square root of 0 0.2 times 10 to the power times 0 0.5 squared over 9 times 10 to the power 9. And that gives us 2.4 times 10 to the power minus 6 column. And that will be equal to 2.4 micro column. So in summary, we say the Coulomb's law states that the force of attraction and repulsion between two point charges is directly proportional to the product of the charges Q1 and Q2 and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two charges. Then we also say that the electric field is a region where 
The force of electrical origin is experienced. We said the electrostatic force can be repulsive or attractive depending on if the, char the two charges are of the same polarity or opposite polarity. So now you look at the assignment. So number one, two positive point charges, Q1 is equal to plus 16 microcoulomb and Q2 plus 4 microcoulomb are separated in a vacuum by a distance of 3.0 meter. Find the spot on the line between the two charges where the electric force is minus 500 newton. You are giving 1 over 5, 4 pi epsilon 0 is equal to 9.0 times 10 to power 9 newton meter square per coulomb square. Number 2. Two alpha particles are placed 2.0 meters apart. They experience electrostatic repulsion with a force of 9.2 times 10 to the power minus 4 newton. If they are released, what will be their instantaneous acceleration? Now, you are giving the constant one electron is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19 column. 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 is equal to 9.0 times 10 to the power 9 newton meter square per coulomb square. Then take the value for the mass of alpha particle. Thank you very much and stay safe.